ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا اما بعد we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abundantly the way he deserves to be praised and we seek refuge with Allah from the evil within our souls and the consequences of our bad deeds whomsoever Allah guides no one can lead astray and whomsoever Allah allows to go astray because they do not want any guidance then no one can guide and I bear witness that there is no God that deserves worship except Allah he is alone and he has no partners and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a slave and his final messenger we ask Allah to exalt his mention to grant him peace and to send his blessings and his salutations upon him and his companions and his wives and all those who follow them on the path of righteousness until the day of recompense oh you have believed be mindful of Allah and fear Him the way He deserves to be feared. And do not die except in the state of submission as Muslims. Brothers in faith, in an effort to bring people to Islam or to keep Muslims in the folds of Islam, people involved in propagation or da'wah, travel upon different paths and they utilize different means have different approaches and this is fine in fact this is good as to provide the different people with their different personalities with a matching figure that they appreciate that they understand from and it's someone that they feel compatible with otherwise one form may be boring it may be entertaining to some boring to others so that variety in and of itself is healthy is required is encouraged however that variety has a limitation while we want to approach matters differently and communicate to the masses effectively each according to his own style his own capabilities his own credentials his own qualifications there are certain areas where no one is allowed to go no one who represents this religion who speaks on behalf of islam is allowed to go no one and this includes people involved in propagation and each and every one of you brothers at his own level in your daily communication with others when it comes to the matter of islam and the subject matter which i will speak about shortly inshallah this is one area no one is allowed to go but today this has become the playground of many this is the only place they go the place they're not supposed to go is the only place they go and, and they want to play with the religion from that destination from that location and that place is under the umbrella of disbelief and apostasy whether the person has gone completely in so he left Islam or he is just swarming around the edges on the verge 
of deviating and leaving Islam, it's all in the same zone of danger. Before I tell you what it is, picture this. A prominent da'i and how I wish to withdraw and scratch out that term. A propagator of Islam says on one of his media social media pages, Twitter, Facebook, whatever you want to call it. Composing the dua for the day of Arafah. This is someone that you want to learn Islam from. He's sitting down, composing the dua for the day of Arafah. What comes to mind? Some ayah from the Quran, some hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Something which he might have come up on his own that is in agreement with both Ala Rasi No problem, bring it No Prominent on the list On the top of the list Of the dua of the day of Arafah Is Allahumma Destroy iTunes a complete destruction. I mean, iTunes, for those who don't know, is a place where music is uploaded and downloaded for those who use iPhones. This is a software issue. It's a server issue. It's a worldly issue. Do you have the nerve, O oh Muslim, to say on the day of Arafah, oh Allah, destroy iTunes. This is an individual from whom I'm supposed to learn Islam. This is the representation of Islam. If you do this, what did you leave for those who know less? This is a person with qualifications and shahada and tazkiyah and you name it. The Sheikh, the Maulana, the Mufti of his time. Joking. Mockery of the deen. Two different subject matters. Joking is not equal to mockery of the deen. But joking about the deen is mockery. And mockery has been determined and the fatwa has been issued by Allah Jalla Jalalu himself in the Quran. What is the verdict on someone who wants to make fun of religious matters? It happened at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Some of the hypocrites of that time were speaking about the Hafad of the Qur'an. Those who had memorized the Qur'an. In, because of their low iman, low faith, they said just in jest, playing around. We have never seen worse than our memorizers of the Qur'an. Bigger bellies, no one with bigger bellies, and with more lies, and more cowardly when meeting the enemy than our Qur'an, those who recite the Qur'an. One of the believers heard them in the masjid. He said, by Allah you have lied. And I will tell the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what you said. The man t told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam what these people had said. So that man who made that statement came to the camel of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was holding on to it under telling him Innama kunna nakhudu wa nal'ab We were just having a discussion and playing around. There was no intent. We're just fooling around. Allah revealed an ayah. Allah revealed an ayah. وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ لَيَقُولُوا إِنَّمَا كُنَّا نَخُضُ وَنَلْعَبُ If you ask them, they will say we were only playing around. قُلْ أَبِ اللَّهِ وَآيَاتِهِ وَرَسُولِهِ 
kuntum tastahzi'un Say is it regarding Allah and His ayat and His messenger that you mock? لا تعتذروا Don't apologize قد كفرتم بعد إيمانكم You have disbelieved after your iman They had low faith They had not yet left Islam A statement of the tongue that entailed mocking believers took them outside the folds of the religion this is the declaration of Allah this is why it is often emphasized brothers in faith do not mix the religion with mockery you can joke no doubt no one has told you everything that has to do with religion has to have a frowning, serious face from A to Z. The Prophet ﷺ used to joke around with the companions and the Salaf used to joke around. We're not against some entertainment and some fun, but it has to be within the boundaries that do not affect the actual subject matter directly. Meaning in the context of giving a lecture, you can joke about anything. But don't make the religion the subject of your jokes. You cannot. It's a fine line. And we do not declare this disbelief upon anybody. It is not our business. So whether that individual or others, none of us is coming to say, you have left Islam. It's none of my business. It's between him and Allah Azza wa Jal. But it is important to clarify that these are areas where we cannot involve ourselves in even as spectators. The sad news is that everyone who liked this post and has knowledge is guilty like he is. The one who laughs at this joke is also guilty. Because when it comes to Allah Azza wa Jal, this is not a subject of laughter. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهِ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ The true believers are those when Allah's name is mentioned, their hearts tremble. And we ask Allah to forgive us for our dead hearts. That they don't tremble anymore. This does not mean that we can become heedless to the point not, that not only our hearts do not tremble, but we also laugh now. How can I put Allahumma and iTunes in one sentence on the day of Arafah as the most prominent of my dua? Which believer in his right mind will dare to post this to the masses with thousands of followers, gullible followers? who get entertained with these things and they get happy. Masakin, they don't know any better because their teacher is a clown. If the teacher is a clown, what do you expect the students to be? Serious? And like him are many today on the scene. They have taken comedy as the path to da'wah. If you want to be a comedian and you're giving da'wah at the same time, quit this job now. If you want to do da'wah and use occasional comedy, barakallah feet. Because some people say, Ya akhi, it's not befitting to joke. This is a matter of the religion, you're contradicting yourself. The scholars don't joke. Two things to say to that. First, the scholars joke. And we have many which we can quote. Secondly, you have to differentiate between a sheikh, a sheikh who is teaching his tolab, his students, like classrooms where they have their notepads and pens and they're trying to learn a whole book with the sheikh. You will find in these sessions, there aren't many jokes. Everything is in that serious mode and that is the suitable situation for it. Where the tulab are students of knowledge, people that have memorized the Quran, memorized Bukhari, memorized Muslim, and they try to learn now usul al-fiqh or something, yes, there's little room for jokes and entertainment. And that even exists. 
but when a speaker is addressing the masses on YouTube, where everybody's there, the good, the bad, the one who cares for the deen, the one who doesn't, the one who has patience to hear five minutes, the one who doesn't, then obviously you have to now modify the speech according to the audience. Otherwise you will attract 3% of the people and 97% will go elsewhere or go astray. So we are encouraging those involved in da'wah to utilize whatever is humorous and allowed within the deen in their communication of the, of the message. No problem. But you know, you have to draw the line somewhere. It's all about knowing the limitations and where to draw the line. I ask Allah to forgive me and forgive you. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُ Alhamdulillah, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala rasulillah amma ba'd. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abundantly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made also a distinction between the people. He made a distinction between those who know and those who don't know. Qul hal yastawi alladhina ya'lamoon wa alladhina la ya'lamoon. Say, are they equal those who know and those who don't know? Absolutely not. Never. And similarly, in the matters of da'wah, people are not the same. Those of us who are involved in da'wah at some level have a bigger obligation in regards to the subject matter than the regular person who may not know any better, therefore he's excused. The beauty of our religion is, if you don't know, you're excused. Ignorance is a valid excuse, except in the matters where you, were, you could have learned, but you chose not to learn. Or in the matters which are from the necessities of the religion. No one can come on the Day of Judgment and say, I did not know what La ilaha illallah meant. Or I didn't have the time to study it. No one can claim they didn't know how to pray. These are things which are now readily available. But regarding the detailed matters, Allah mentioned those. وَإِذَا عَلِمَ مِنْ آيَاتِنَا شَيْئًا اتَّخَذَا هُزُوَ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ He mentioned about a type of people. When they do happen to know anything about our ayat, they take it in jest and mockery. And for those, is a humiliating punishment. There are many videos that circulate on WhatsApp, on YouTube, of people trying to communicates a message of Islam, but they have gone to extreme in this area of joking and mockery. To the point that one of them goes to the extent of using some effects on the computer to make his eyes look huge and his nose get small while he's wearing a shimad, supposedly mocking the idea that you try to pray on an airplane. Because it is not in agreement with Western mentality that you pray on an airplane. So his suggestion is, don't pray. Don't pray. Wait till you arrive and then pray. Sure, this can be an option if your flight is not 10, 11 hours and you will leave, the time of Salah would go. What are you gonna do with Fajr? You have to pray Fajr. Fajr while on an airplane is a short period. One second you see this, the, the light, the next thing you know you're inside the sun. You don't have much time. You're not going to pray Fajr because you're afraid if you pray on an airplane and you say Allahu Akbar, everybody's going to freak out and think you're going to blow up the plane. So he makes fun of the whole thing. Don't pray, this is his fatwa, this is a mufti who comes with this clown mode from the beginning of the video until the end. Just clowning, 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 clowning till the last second. Including this famous fatwa. Not Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, not bin Uthaymi, not bin Baz. No, this nobody. Don't pray. So you will not scare the American, or the British, or the whatever Western nationality. They don't want to be scared if you play, pray on the airplane. 
and we pray on the airplane all the time, irrespective of the airlines. Do you really scream Allahu Akbar? Are Muslims that ignorant? When you pray, you pray to yourself. If you're not on Saudi Airlines, there's probably no Jama'ah. Only Saudi Airlines, Jazahum Allah Khair, they have actually a Musalla in some of their airplanes, especially for international flights. So you can pray two, three people. Other airplanes, you barely have room for yourself, Ya Sheikh. So you're not doing a Jama'ah. You're praying on your own. Do you scream Allahu Akbar to pray? No. Allahu Akbar, you're praying by yourself. In fact, people who are of intelligence might come and ask you later, what were you doing? You can use it to give da'wah. We pray five times a day, I was praying. You just communicate softly to the people what you did. If they like it, congratulations. Congratulations. If they don't like it, big deal. You don't like it when they drink alcohol. Have you ever seen anyone say, excuse me, do you mind? If I get drunk next to you, and you told him, I mind, and he stopped? They drink in spite of you. You can't pray in spite of them? These are the individuals now that want to educate the Muslims on Islam. And the victims are brothers in faith, sisters in faith, especially in the West. And the reason why I speak about the West, because we use English here as the means of communication between us, and that is a relevant language. So we have to communicate this message to the people here and the people elsewhere. So I remind myself of you brothers in faith. If you want to be artistic, you want to be innovative, you want to use different means to communicate Islam, go ahead as long as you're not leaving the realms of the Quran and the Sunnah. If you're going to come, if you're going to come up with something that is innovative to the point that is against the Sunnah, don't do it. If you will go that extra mile and now mock the deed to attract audience, then I tell you my brother, quit giving da'wah and save yourself. It's one thing to destroy yourself and it's another thing to destroy a thousand people with you that will hold you by your neck on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and say, I learned this nonsense from this guy. Oh Allah, he taught me this. This Sheikh with the so-called qualifications made it seem that it's okay for me to comprise dua for the day of Arafah about destroying iTunes or iPhones or anything else. He taught me. I don't know any better. This is my example. I didn't have the privilege of being in the presence of the Prophet This was my example who was supposed to connect me to the Messenger of Allah. I have no access to the scholars that speak Arabic. I don't know Arabic. I only know English. This is my only access, supposedly to them. This is what he's teaching me. He will have a lot to answer. And you don't want to do that. The deen is simple. Let's not complicate it. Everything is done in moderation. Give da'wah, joke, in moderation. Make things easy for the people as much as you can, in moderation. Stick to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Don't compromise it, in moderation. This is the as-sirat al-mustaqim, which we ask Allah Azza wa Jal for every day. Otherwise, we would be غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. And look at the Jews and the Christians. You will not find people that mark religion more than these two. Especially the Christians. And we learn some of these traits from them. Jesus is a subject of mockery for many. Within the Christian denominations. And we Muslims cannot follow this path. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, thabit qulubana ala deenik. Allahumma ya musarrib al-qulub, israf qulubana ala ta'atik. Rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'da id hadaytana. Wahab lana min ladunka rahmatan innaka anta al-wahab. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha, wa zakiha anta khayru man zakaha. Anta waliyuha wa maulaha wa anta ala kulli shayin qadir. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa zubna attiba'ah. وأرنا الباطل باطلا وزبنا اجتنابه 
اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا ذا الجلال والاكرام اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد